Everybody, it's Tyler. We're at the championships, checking on team number 4635, Bot Busters. This team, three regional wins already this year, and they might be the best team in Max Robot out of Mexico ever. This robot has been absolutely electric this year, and I can't wait to show off more of what's going on about it. And to help me speak more about this, I have Alexis, Gus, Pato, and Chris. And this robot here, going all the way through, you gotta just check out the incredible design they did with this. Uh, it's just so efficient on the field. When you watch this robot move, uh, you can just tell it's one of those elite teams out there. So I can't wait to talk more about this robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First updates now is supported by Kettering University. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in robotics scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first chose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. Uh, so Chris, let's start out with the intake on here. Talk to me about what's gone into it. Love to hear more about the bar as well too, and uh, any changes made through the season. Yeah, well, uh, these are intake, uh, clearly. Uh... We actually, like, the main thing we focused on was that it was uh, strong enough to k take hits and, uh, I mean, to keep working even though uh, some things may, may, may break or stuff like that. Uh, the main change we did, I think it was, uh, we changed from chains to bands uh, because the chains were, like, we're breaking a lot and or or like falling a lot. Yeah. So we changed them to bands and it seems to be working uh, pretty pretty well. Uh, one of the main components, I think, it's the mechanical wheels that makes the ball uh, redirected to the center. Uh, that uh, we found good use of it. Uh, we also had the kicker bar in the beginning of the season uh, that help uh, all the balls like go actually in because sometimes uh, the robot uh, used to go like over them instead sure, of gotcha. driving them. So that was a problem and we fixed it with the kicker bar. So this, this kicker bar helped out with that a lot more as well too. Yeah. So can we see the intake come down and then uh, let's put a piece of cargo in and then we'll keep moving on to your uh, indexer. Sure. So Alexis, you're going to speak more about the indexing process on it. So tell, talk to me uh, what's gone into it uh, and how it's working out for you. First of all, the in indexer is uh, has these pulleys and it has these this bands in order to, to take the ball to the shooter. Uh, the indexer uh, has these plates in order to, to have a, a, a good position. Over here, we have these ribbons in order for the ball to get to maintain to the the indexer and bounce off the balls that we don't want. Also, we have these uh, these uneven plates in order for the ball to maintain in the right position. We have made some changes for to these plates. We take some weight reduction, as you can see, and we also place some electronic parts over here. One of our uh, newest uh, up updates of the of the indexer is this part over here. Uh, in here, we place uh, this part in order for the balls to maintain a better direction. Over here, we can see uh, it is connected by a motor that is over here. It's a little bit, uh, um, uh, uh, it's connected through a band. And this will give the, feed, the feeder the direction so the shooter can have the balls. So as you go up uh, from your tower area as well, too, I know we'll talk about some electronics and sensors in a little bit. Uh, did you have to do anything from a mechanical side to try to like prevent any jamming or any scrubbing of the cargo or anything like that? Yeah, so the ramps uh, at the beginning were totally even. Sure. So we then, this one is higher and this one is lower to prevent that from happening. Yeah. And right now, with this new uh, like update, you could say, it kind of like sticks more, but this is what it's this net is for. Finicky, yeah, it's more finicky. Yeah but the intake does its, does its problems. I mean, this is the same kind of like rope we use on the climber, but this is like kind of thinner and this is a uh, thicker. Uh, the ball used to jam a lot in the middle. So another twitch we did was uh, to make the, the sky leader go uh, to kind of switch like scissors so uh, the balls could move. 
and sure. And I'm on jam from right there from the middle. Like it, it kind of helped the move and uh, help uh, one go uh, uh, first and then the other one. Makes a lot of sense. That cool to see the uh, improvements uh, happen throughout as we go through here. Uh, Pato, you're going to speak more about the uh, shooter as we yeah. go into here. So you guys, your team uh, has a pretty heavy set of flywheels on there, right? Yeah. For that. So talk to me more about the decision to go uh, that route and anything else you want to add in on it. Yeah, so we started prototyping a lot with the compression and the type of wheels, and we finally decided on the Colson wheels. And we added these flywheels in order to not like lose any speed on the, on the shooter. And then after our Monterey Regional, we decided to add these new wheels on the back of the hood to take out the backspin. So we also have the limelight on here, steady, and we, all, we have everything with change, and, and we have linear actuators that help us give a lot of positions for the hood. And we also had some of those break, uh, but it was a quick change, like two screws and change. Uh, we also have the feeder with mini news, as well as the index, and yeah. What is uh, Bob Busters, what do you like to shoot from in the field? Like, what's your preference? Uh, well, I think our, like, between the tarmac and the safe zone is like a sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Uh, let's go into your climber. Uh, talk to me yeah. a little bit more what goes into it. And then if possible, if we can kind of show a little bit how the sequence works and then uh, okay. narrate that a little bit for me. Okay, okay. So everything is with these pistons. We have like uh, so a big screw around here that grabs onto the pistons. And these are like telescopic arms. So there's a frame inside this frame. So we have a 3D printing over here that wraps around uh, the rope. Sure. So with that, we have some motors over here. Yeah, a gearbox that just turns around all this. And then we have some springs back here that pull also. And then it comes down and touches the limit switch. So that's that. So let's see uh, a couple of deployments. I know we can't do a full uh, cl yeah. climber sequence here, but let's see it deploy and then give me a little bit more on what's going on. Okay. So first it pulls these two arms back. Activates the pistons and then it's gonna pull down. Perfect. And how quick are you doing a traversal climb in about? Uh, I think 15 seconds, 12 seconds. Sure, yeah. awesome. Well, let's wrap it up. Let's end up with Gus. Anything else you want to talk about the climber and then tell us about any other sensors on the robot too. Uh, sure, uh, climber wise, I mean, it's all a automated sequence. Yep. So we just have checkpoints, you could call them, uh, to keep advancing the sequence to check that nothing dies or anything of the sort. Uh, I don't know, maybe the LEDs, I guess. They're, for, they're, we normally use them for indicators for okay. the flywheel speed. So as you can see when we oh, turn cool. the flywheel, uh, they're the alliance color. Yeah. In this case, they're blue for some reason. Uh, I mean, we just played as blue. So I imagine that would make that. sense, yeah. yeah. And then they turn green when it's ready to shoot. And so that's a great indicator for... So, so your drivers are actually able to see this on the field? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're pretty visible yeah. once you're on it. So, And uh, we have a couple of uh, limit switches right here for the for the loading of the balls. Sure, so and you're detecting when they're, when they're in place and that sort of thing? Yeah. And, cool. Uh, hmm. I mean, we control the LEDs with a Raspberry Pi. Okay. And uh, we take uh, the three volt logic from the Raspi to a five volt logic to for the LEDs. Well, uh, Bot Busters, uh, your team's been looking phenomenal all season. I can't wait to see uh, more of your performance here at the World Championships. So good luck and thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us about your robot and your team. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. If you want to continue enjoying the excitement of robotics, come check out what's going on at Kettering University, including their Combat BattleBots team and First Center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Be sure to apply to Kettering beginning in August of 2022. Go to kettering.edu apply to learn more. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.